Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is spend some time practicing how to trace a drop of blood. So hopefully you have learned um, the vessels, the major vessels of the body, including the heart and also the structures in the heart. And so we're going to talk about how blood flows through the heart and then out to a particular part of the body and back. So this is called tracing a drop of blood. And it's an important skill to understand because think about um, if you were going to, you know, give an IV and you're trying to figure out, you know, where does the medicine go next? I mean, if you put it into the, to the left arm, you know, does it go straight to the right arm? Does it go down to the leg? Does it go down to the, to the foot? Does it go to the heart first? Does it go to the brain? So really understanding um, how blood circulates through the body is an important skill. And it'll really help you understand um, when we get into hormones. Um, talking about how hormones are moving through the body. When we talk about how a hormone goes to its target organ, you'll have a really good understanding of how it can be made in one part of the body and then travel and go to another part of the body. All right, so um, this is going to be, um, I'm going to be writing a lot for you uh, on this uh, particular PowerPoint and showing you how I do it. Um, where's my mouse? Okay. So um, I've got this broken down in this PowerPoint. You've got a PowerPoint with words on it. So this is um, basically this is what you would type in or write into a test. Okay, so if you had the exam and you have to trace a drop of blood, this is what you would put down. So this is the trace that you would put down. Um, on the next slide, um, it's a blank piece of paper. And I'm going to show you how to schematically kind of go through this process and how to think about it and how to trace this drop of blood. Okay, so the, uh, the words, this is the answer to the question, and then I'm going to show you how I got there. Okay, so um, you may want to have this printed off uh, for your reference as I go to the next blank page. I've got one for me so that I'll make sure I don't miss anything as I'm, as I'm talking to you. Uh, so before we actually talk about taking blood out to some part of the body and bringing it back, let's review, uh, just talk about how does blood flow through the heart, okay? And so uh, there's several different ways to think about this. Um, I like to do it this way. I like to draw an old-fashioned heart, and then I put a cross, kind of divided into four chambers. And so I label these, and this is what I do. I have a, you know, I tell my students, you can have a scratch piece of paper, and I kind of uh, get your landscape uh, drawn out. And it's a lot easier once you've drawn it out to then trace the blood through it. So we have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. All right. Now we got to think about which um, vessels are important. All right. So we know that we have a superior. Whoops, what happened there? Superior vena cava. Whoa, superior vena cava, and an inferior vena cava. And so I just kind of say vena cava. It's going to be bringing blood. Let's just kind of draw it like this. So, from the top and bottom, bring, vena cava bringing blood to the right side of the heart, right? We know that blood's going to leave the right side of the heart, the right ventricle, right? Through the pulmonary trunk, which is going to divide into a left and right, pul whoops, right pulmonary, can't spell today, pulmonary artery, and a left pulmonary artery because it's going away from the heart, right? And we know that, so this is going to go out, so this is going to go out to the lungs, and this is going to go out to the other lung, all right? So that's where those are going, all right? We know that blood's got to come back to the left side of the heart through what? Veins, right? So pulmonary veins. And this will be left and right, depending on um, which lung the blood went out to. Then blood's going to leave the body, or leave the heart, go out to the body through the aorta. Okay? All right. So those are the major vessels. You have your, uh, your vena cava, your pulmonary trunk, which divides to pulmonary arteries. You have your pulmonary veins bringing blood back to the heart. And you have your blood leaving the heart through the aorta. Okay? Those are the major players. Now, you also have to think about... Um, how is blood moving um, from these different chambers? Are there valves involved? And there are. We have a valve here, right, which is the tricuspid. We have a valve here, which is the bicuspid or mitral valve. I usually I always say mitral valve. Um, is there a 
um, valve as the blood leaves the right ventricle and goes to the pulmonary trunk. Yes, there is a pulmonary semilunar valve. There's an L. There's a pulmonary semilunar valve there. Is there a valve as blood leaves the left side and goes to the aorta? Yes, there's an aortic semilunar valve. All right, so um, I just, you know, have my own abbreviations. You may want to use something else, but I just kind of, and I know that looks horrible, but then I just draw it out like that. And so then I can go, okay, now I need to trace this blood through the heart. So again, you'll have this next to you as you're looking. This will, I, I don't want to write it out. It's a lot, of, lot for me to, you know, to write out in the video. So let's say, what happens first? Blood enters in the right atrium. So that's the first thing you would write. It's going to then travel through the tricuspid valve. Let me see if I can change colors here. Let's go, let's just make it be red. Okay. So blood goes from the right atrium in through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it has to pass through the pulmonary semilunar valve. So following along with what um, I've already written, so this would be your answer. From the semilunar valve, it goes to the pulmonary trunk. And then you can say uh, just pulmonary arteries, because we're not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you left lung or right lung, it's just going out to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. When it gets to the pulmonary arteries, uh, the next smallest artery is called an arteriole. So then you would say, okay, the blood's traveling through the pulmonary arterioles, out to the lungs. So pulmonary arterioles is then gonna reach the pulmonary capillaries. Again, I'm not real concerned if you're doing left or right in the lungs, we're just gonna assume blood's going out to the lungs and coming back, uh, regardless of left or right. When it gets to the capillaries, you're gonna drop off CO2 and pick up oxygen. So you wanna put that down. That's, that's an important step. I need to know that you know where you get the oxygen and where you drop off the CO2. Okay, so you gotta remember, you know, when do you do that? Is that in the lungs or out in the body? So remember, write that down. So now you've picked up your oxygen. Okay, so you've gone out to the lungs. So your blood has traveled from the uh, pulmonary trunk to the left pulmonary arteries out to the lungs and to the right pulmonary arteries out to the lungs to the arterioles, the capillaries, you've exchanged gases. Now the blood's gonna come back, and so the next large, uh, next largest vessel would be a venule. So it's gonna come back through the pulmonary venules, okay, left and right, because you're coming back from both lungs. And then it's gonna go to a pulmonary vein, remember, left and right, depending on you're coming back from the left or right side of the lung, into your pulmonary veins, into the left atrium, okay? So again, just following along with what we've already written. So once it enters the left atrium, it's got to pass through a valve. So it's going to pass through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. Then it's going to pass through the aortic semilunar valve and into the aorta. All right. And then depending on where it's going to go after that, you would say uh, it's going to go through the aortic arch. So there's the ascending part of the arch into the arch, then the descending part of the arch. And then is it going to go into the thoracic cavity? into the abdominal cavity. So it really depends on where your next point of, um, of delivery is. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you several examples as we move through this video. All right, so again, so draw your picture. The first thing you need to be able to do is do just the blood trace through the heart. So practice this several times. That's half the number of points on the exam. Every blood trace will go through the heart and out to the lungs and back to the heart. So if you can do this part, you get half credit um, on the blood trace, all right? So practice, 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 again, this is the answer, okay? So this is what you're gonna write on the, um, on the exam for blood trace through the heart, all right? Now we wanna add on, let's send it somewhere else, okay? All right, so again, I've written it out for you. I've written the answer out for you, okay? And I'm gonna go to the next page, which is a blank page, and, uh, and do that for you again. So just as a reminder, if we're gonna take blood from the right atrium, all right, and we want it to go out to either the left or the right, okay, and I'll give you a specific uh, uh, place to go. So on your test, it'll say either right or it'll say left, uh, gastrocnemius uh, muscle. And uh, these are examples um, of where I might, send, where I might uh, test you. Uh, typically, the week before the exam, I will give you uh, four or five places in the body and say, okay, you've, you've practiced, you've learned how to do this, now here are some um, possible places I'm going to test you on, and that gives you a little bit of time before the exam to think about maybe some other um, options that I haven't actually taught you on. That allows you to think and come up with the answer on your own. So these are just examples. They probably won't be the one on the exam. Something very similar, but based on what you learned from the video, 
then you can uh, figure out how to get out to another part of the body. Okay, so just uh, again, this is these are just examples. Anywhere in the body is fair game, but I will narrow it down for you uh, before the exam. All right, so um, so this is the right atrium to the right or left gastrocnemius muscle or your calf muscles. You got to remember that from uh, 201, and back to the right atrium. So got to go into the heart, all the way through the heart, out to the lungs, back to the heart, go through the aorta, out to um, the calf muscle, back from the calf, back to the inferior vena cava, and back to the heart. All right, so I've written all of this out for you. All right, so this part, again, this is exactly what we've done before. You've got to trace blood through the heart first. All right, so it's got to come from the right atrium through uh, the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. So again, on the exam, I would have a blank piece of paper and I would draw a little heart, just like I just did, okay, and do all that labeling right and left and right and left atria ventricles atria ventricles and draw your major vessels and hopefully by this time you know which ones those are you know where the valves are there's a valve here there's a valve here there's a valve here and there's a valve here okay so you just need to do that and then walk through the trace of the heart right atrium through the tricuspid valve through the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve through the pulmonary trunk, out to the pulmonary arteries, left and right, uh, to the pulmonary arterioles, to the pulmonary capillaries, tell me what happens there, blood's going to return to the venules and then the veins, into the left atrium, through the mitral valve, into the left ventricle, through the aortic semilunar valve, and to the aorta. Now this is where you've got to think, okay? Where am I going? I'm going to the calf muscle. So that means I've got to go all the way through the arch of the aorta. So I've got to ascend, I've got to go through the arch, I've got to descend, I've got to come to the thoracic and the abdominal aorta. So for aorta, next to that, you would write all the parts of the aorta that you're expected to pass through, okay? So you're gonna pass through all parts of the aorta to get to the calf muscle. Now, what I usually do is I draw a person, <laughs> okay? And I know y'all think I can't draw because I can't at all, <laughs> as evidenced by that drawing. It's kind of a Picasso-ish type of a drawing. All right, so then, uh, so this is going to be my left side. This is my right side. So here's my heart. Okay. So once I've done all the stuff that goes through the heart, then what I do is kind of like a cheat sheet. I go, okay, where am I going? So let's say we're going to go to the left gastrocnemius. So I know I'm going to have to come from the aorta, all right, it's going to come down, it's going to go all the way through the thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, and what's the next major artery, okay, so the aorta splits into two iliacs, remember, there's iliac arteries, the next uh, level. The iliac artery is then going to do what? It's going to become the femoral artery, right? Uh, where is the gastrocnemius? It's in the lower leg, right? So we've got to go behind the knee. So remember the popliteal artery? Yeah. Then it's going to actually reach the gastrocnemius, okay? So you're going to be, so which artery would be closest to the gastrocnemius? Don't look, don't look. Which one? Don't look. <laughs> Is it on the back of your leg or the front of your leg? Is it near the tibia or the fibula? So it'd be the posterior tibial artery. Okay, so you got to start thinking about this. So you go, okay, it's going to go behind the knee, kind of on the back side of the leg, and then you're going to have blood going out to those arterioles, okay, and the capillaries. What happens at these capillaries? You drop off oxygen and pick up CO2. All right, so let's review. So here's my man. Okay, so blood's going to leave the heart. It's going to travel all the way through the abdominal aorta, down, here's my left side, down the iliac artery, to the femoral artery, to the popliteal artery, to the posterior tibial artery. And remember, if you're, if the question asks you right or left, be sure to tell me that you're going uh, down the left or right side. So always put left or right. Uh, if When it asks you if you're going somewhere that has a left or right, obviously the spleen doesn't have left or right or the stomach doesn't have left or right, but the gastrocnemius would. Um, I've actually had students who have traced blood down the right side and come back up the left. 
So yeah, so make sure that you're paying attention where you are. All right, so blood's gonna then go to those capillaries, drop off the oxygen, pick up the CO2. So what's the next size vessel? It's gonna return through a venule, right? So it's gonna be the venule of the gastrocnemius. So this is an important point right here. Uh, whenever we're talking about where you're going, um, you're gonna have the last named artery that you know of, like so like the posterior tubular artery, but we haven't gotten down to the nitty gritty of the exact names of the arteries and veins that, that feed very specific muscles and things like that. So for these purposes, you can just say the arterioles of the gastrocnemius. Just go from the last artery that you learned and then go straight to arterioles, okay? And venules. So you have the venules of the gastrocnemius muscle and then the first vein that we should know is the posterior tibial vein. And since we went down the left side, we're gonna come back up the left side up the popliteal vein, so you're thinking about the drawing, you would come back up just like you did, just retracing your steps through the venous return. Whoops. Through the popliteal vein, through the femoral vein. Now, you can't cheat into the great saphenous. That's too easy, okay? So no returning blood from the feet and lower leg through the great saphenous, okay? You've got to come uh, basically retrace your steps. So don't use great saphenous. Uh, once it returns from the left or right uh, femoral vein, so in this case the left one, we'll go to the iliac vein. And then the iliac vein is going to jump into the inferior vena cava and then right back to the right atrium. So we've gone from the right atrium to the right atrium. Okay? So again, what I would suggest you do is uh, look at what your plan is, draw it out before you write it out. And that way you won't miss any of the steps. Okay? All right, so let's do another one. Uh, so this is from the right atrium to the right, bra right biceps brachii muscle and back to the right atrium. So the biceps brachii is where? It's in the arm, okay? So we're gonna take, um, it's in the upper arm. So it's that muscle, you know, your flexor muscles. So we're gonna think, okay, how does, the, how does blood get from the heart to the arm? Well, we know we gotta trace blood through the heart again. All right, so all of this, this is going to be the same again. All right, so what should you do? You're going to draw your heart, label it, draw your valves, draw your major arteries and veins, and then trace blood through the heart. Now, again, this is where you've got to think. Once you get to the aorta, all right, where am I going? I'm going out to an arm. So if you think back to what the, um, the aorta looks like, remember, so here's your aorta. Remember it does this? And it's got those branches. So those are the branches you have to know. You have to go, hmm, am I going to the right side? Am I going to the right side of the head? Am I going to a right arm? Am I going to the left side of the head? Am I going to a left arm? Because remember, the aorta has those three branches, so you've got to know which branch to take. So let's think about it. We're going to the right biceps brachii. That means you've got to take the brachiocephalic artery. Okay, this is the vessel that's going to take you to the right side and then remember, it then splits into a brachial artery and a cephalic artery, okay? Or, car sorry, carotid artery. <laughs> um, so, um, you don't have to put left or right because there's only a brachiocephalic on the right side, okay? So, the first step after the aortic arch is you're going to the brachiocephalic artery. So, what I would do is I would draw my person again. Don't really need legs because we're not going down to the legs. Okay, this is going to be the right side. This is the left side. So you got your heart. All right. So blood's going to go through the from the heart. You did all the heart stuff. It's going to come from the aorta to the aortic arch. It's going to take the brachiocephalic, right, artery. And then that's going to split to a subclavian and a carotid. So you're going to take the right subclavian, and then where's it going to go? Under the arm, right axillary. Then it's going to go to the right brachial. Now right brachial, that's kind of the last um, last artery uh, that we know. Um, so uh, what you would say is now I'm going to go to, the, since that's the last named artery that we know, now we're actually going to the muscle. So uh, you could either use the right brachial arterioles or biceps brachii arterioles. I personally would say the muscle that I'm going to. So whatever your target is, just say that arteriole. So we're going to the right biceps brachii arterioles. What's gonna happen? Gas has gotta be exchanged, drop off oxygen, pick up CO2, 
do what? Come back through the biceps brachii venules. Those venules become brachial veins. Right brachial veins then become, let's go back to our picture. So now we're bringing it back. So we've exchanged here. Now blood's going to come back through the brachial vein, the axillary vein, the subclavian vein. Hmm, now what does it do? Subclavian vein goes straight to the uh, vena cava? Or does it have to go through a brachiocephalic vein? Yeah, it's got to go through a brachiocephalic vein before it goes to the inferior or superior? Superior vena cava and into the right atrium. So let's look at our answers again. So it goes from the right brachial vein to the right axillary vein to the right subclavian vein. You have to say right or left because remember there is a right and left brachiocephalic vein. So blood's going to return to the right brachiocephalic vein where it will then join the superior vena cava and then go right into the right atrium. Okay. Now you don't have to write all this part down on the exam. That's just for notes as I'm trying to teach it to you. All right. So again, how do you how do you approach this? You read the question. You say, okay, where am I going? And you know, where do I have to go out and return from? And think, what's what's my what's my trip here? Draw your heart. You always have to travel blood through the heart. It's going to go from the right atrium into the right ventricle, out to the lung, exchange gases, come back to the left side of the heart, the left atrium, go to the left ventricle, through the aorta. At the aorta, this is where you have to make the decision. Am I going to the head and arms? Or am I going to the chest? Am I going to the abdomen? Am I going to the legs? That tells you what all you have to write as far as aortic arch, ascending, descending, thoracic, abdominal. That tells you what you got to do. You got to think, is it left or right? It's not always the same if you're going to a left side or a right side. So pay attention. That's why I always um, advise my students to, to draw you a picture and really think about it before you actually put the words down um, in your test. All right, so let's do another one. This is a long video, I know, but uh, it's just the way it is. Um, again, this is just some practice, and um, and we'll probably, uh, again, I'll give you some ideas about what you'll actually, actually be tested on. All right, so this one is going to be from the right atrium to the left biceps brachii. So I've picked the same muscle, but I'm really trying to, uh, you know, point out that whole difference between left and right, okay, because it's not always the same. So let's think about it right atrium to the left arm, the left biceps brachii, out to, out and back to the right atrium. So again, through the heart, that's the same. Again, you know, so if you have this question on the test, again, draw your heart, at least get this part right, okay, because that never changes. Right atrium to the tricuspid, the right ventricle, the PSLV, the pulmonary trunk, the pulmonary arteries, arterioles, pulmonary capillaries, exchange your gases, pulmonary venules, pulmonary veins, left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic semilunar valve, aorta. Okay, that doesn't change. Now this is where you got to think. Where am I going? I'm going to an arm. So that means I'm going to have to go to the ascending aorta. Okay, so you're going to have to write ascending, um, ascending aorta, or you can just put ascending because aorta is already written. So ascending aortic arch, and now what am I, am I branching off that arch? I am because I'm going to an arm. So I'm going to have to do what? I'm going to have to take that left brachiocephalic artery, right? Is there a left brachiocephalic artery? No. You go straight to the left subclavian. Remember your three branches? There is no left brachiocephalic. Go straight to the left subclavian. But you have to say left because there is a right subclavian artery. Okay, from the subclavian. So again, if you were to draw your person, so I left these blank pages for you to have a place to draw. So you'd have your person again. I'm just going to draw the arm. So here's my heart. Okay, so the blood is going to leave the aorta, um, go through the arch. It's going to take the branch of the subcla uh, subclavian artery. It's going to go to the axillary artery. It's going to go to the brachial artery. We're going to the biceps, okay, so it would be the biceps arterioles, the biceps um, brachii capillaries, you exchange your gases, drop off oxygen, pick up CO2, come back through the brachial, um, or the biceps brachii uh, venules, the brachial vein, the axillary vein, 
the clavian vein. Then you do have a brachiocephalic vein on both sides, right? So into the brachiocephalic vein and then into the superior vena cava back to the right atrium. All right, so all this is written out for you. Okay, so again, make sure that you're paying attention to uh, left and right because it's not always the same going out left and right. It's not always the same coming back because it's left to right. Again, you don't have to write this part. This is just for your notes. Okay, so again, this is the answer. What you see written down, this is what you write down on the test or something very similar depending on um, where you're going. Um, so for example, um, let's just talk about what I could do. So instead of it saying biceps brachii, this is where you, you know, I'm testing your knowledge from 201 and region names and things like that as well. I might say triceps brachii. I might say the, uh, the brachial radialis. Or, hmm, <laughs> where is that? Brachial radialis. It's in your forearm. Is it on the ulna or the radial side? Hmm. So would that be the radial artery or the ulnar artery? So you'd have to think about it. But again, I'm going to give you a list of potential uh, um, uh, places to go before the exam. So you have plenty of time to spend some time thinking about how you would get out and back to these places. Okay? All right. Um, so again, but these are the answers. Really all that's going to change is going to be, um, you know, uh, this part. The heart is always the same. So, you know, at worst case scenario, uh, get half credit for the heart. All right, so now we're going to go uh, last one. And again, we'll do, uh, probably do maybe some more um, um, in another video uh, as a review before your exam. Um, let's go from the right atrium uh, out to the gonads. Okay, so where are the gonads? you know, <laughs> ovaries and testes, okay, so that's, why, and I would just say, uh, and I might say ovary, I might say testy, or just say gonads, but I will say left or right, because there's something special about gonads, they don't do exactly the same thing, there's a left or right difference, okay, so again, doesn't matter that we're going to the gonads, or the arm, or the leg, or wherever, you still got to go through the heart, all right, so the first thing you would do is you draw your heart, label your heart, Label your vessels, label your valves, trace blood through the heart, all right? Again, this is where you have to think when you get to the aorta. Where am I going? So in this case, I'm going to the gonads. Well, those are going to be in the abdominal pelvic cavity, okay? Or hanging outside the cavity if you're talking about uh, the male. But you got to get down to the pelvic region, basically. So that means you've got to go through the ascending aorta. You've got to travel through the arch. You're not going to take a break. You're going to keep on going. You're going to descend through the aorta. You're going to travel through the thoracic cavity, through the thoracic aorta. You're going to go all the way to the abdominal aorta. Okay, so you've got to write all of that down, all of those parts of the aorta that you're going through. Now, where, um, what artery will take you to the gonads? You have to, is there a, is there, um, let me take a picture. Let's draw this. So here's, we're going to be in the, here's the head. Let's just go ahead and get down here and let's just say ovaries are in a female. So here's my heart. Okay, so we've traced the blood through the heart. Now we're going through the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the descending aorta, through the, thora through the diaphragm, through the thoracic, um, uh, abdom uh, thoracic um, aorta, abdominal aorta, okay. Now we're not going to the legs, so we're not worried about the iliac. So we need to take a branch off the aorta. So there was the celiac trunk. There was a superior and inferior mesenteric branch. Was there a gonadal branch? Yeah, there was. All right, so let's just say we're going to go to uh, the right. So we would take the right gonadal artery. Okay, if we were going to the left, we would take the left gonadal artery. Okay, all right, so we get to the gonads. We'd go to the gonadal arteriole the gonadal capillary. You would exchange your gases, drop off oxygen, pick up CO2, go to the gonadal venule, go to the gonadal vein. Aha, this is where you gotta think, right? So we're coming, we've done our exchange, okay? We're coming back the left side, coming back the right side. Do they do the same thing? Remember your kidneys? 
What are the arteries and veins associated with kidney? Renal arteries and renal veins. So the right side goes straight to the vena cava, right? The left side has to go to the renal vein first. The renal vein first before it goes to the vena cava. Okay, so that's the difference. So let's go to our words again. So we know we go to the abdominal aorta. All right, so we go to the gonadal artery. And so again, that's the last artery that you know of. Okay, so now you just start using the word arterial. So we're in the gonad, so gonad, gonadal arterioles. Again, tell me if you're in the left or right one. Those capillaries, tell me which exchange is happening. You can have your venules. Again, tell me if you're in left or right. You can't go down to the left side and come back up the right side. All those students do it all the time. The tricky part is when you get to the gonadal vein. So the right gonadal vein will go straight to the vena in, uh, inferior vena cava. Okay, so we'll just go straight to it. The left side, you've got to add an extra step. It's got to go to that left gonadal vein, then the inferior vena cava. So there's an extra step on the left side. So um, you probably know me well enough to know by now, am I going to pick the one that's straightforward or am I going to pick the tricky one? Yeah, I'm going to pick the tricky one. So you might as well get used to it. All right, so that's an example of how to uh, trace blood out to the gonad. So um, some other possible things you may have to do is trace blood out to the spleen, uh, out to the stomach. And, and one of my favorite places uh, is to have someone trace blood um, out uh, is out to uh, the sp is out to the spleen because the return is a little bit different. So remember, I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to do another video uh, next week if, and give you some guys some. Um, some more review, but go ahead and think about what what's different about the spleen. The blood's going to come back from the spleen, and it's got to go straight to the inferior vena cava, or does it have to be treated first? Yeah, so think about that hepatic portal system. So I'm going to leave you with that, leave you with some thinking points, and then I will see you in another video, um, and we'll just do a couple more reviews before your exam. All right, guys, sorry about that. It was a long video, but it's a lot to talk about. So, again, um, I would probably print this PowerPoint out big so that you've got the words. Uh, take your, your blank pages um, and just label your, um, your, your path and try to write all this out from memory, okay? So trace it out and then try to write it all out. Uh, it's, it's um, what I see is students will will, uh, will just read through it and never actually write it down without looking, and, and they don't do very well in the test. So uh, hide the hide the answer, you know, turn it around, don't don't look at it, and write the answer out yourself. Okay, and that will um, help you uh, study for the exam. All right, again, sorry it's so long. Uh, see you later.